Hello viewers, uh, today's topic is uh, uh, Dengo fever. So, uh, but before starting the topic, I would like to request you to subscribe this channel for more informative videos every day and uh, to support this channel as well. Thank you very much. And uh, Dengue fever is a disease spread by the Addis Aegypti mosque and is caused by one of four Dengue viruses. So once you are infected with one of the uh, dengue viruses, you will develop immunity uh, to that virus for the rest of your life. However, you can still be infected with the other three viruses. So it's possible to get all four uh, dengue viruses uh, uh, in your uh, lifetime, you know. And the viruses that cause dengue fever are related to those uh, that cause yellow fever and West Nile virus infection. Now the uh, tropical regions are uh, heavily affected and areas that have uh, the greatest risk of uh, infection include uh, uh, like uh, Mexico or the Caribbean, the Central America, Sub-Saharan Africa or South America including Argentina, Chile and uh, uh, Paraguay and uh, South Asia especially Thailand and Singapore and uh, Southern China and Taiwan uh, and uh, northern parts of Australia. So these are the most affected areas. Uh, very few cases occur uh, in the United States. Uh, dengue fever is transmitted via the bite of a mosquito uh, harboring the dengue virus. You know, so the person-to-person -person, uh, transmission does not occur. Uh, now, it's uh, if you have uh, if you contract dengue fever, symptoms usually begin about uh, four to seven days after the initial infection. So in many cases, the symptoms will be mild. Uh, they may be mistaken for symptoms of the flu or another infection. So young children and people who have never experienced infection may have a milder illness than older children and adults. You know. uh, the symptoms generally last for about uh, uh, 10 days and uh, they can include like sudden and high fever uh, that could be up to uh, 100, uh, 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Severe headache, swollen lymph nodes, uh, severe joint and muscle pains, skin rash, uh, appearing between two and five days after the initial uh, fever. You know, so mild to severe nausea, mild to severe vomiting, uh, bleeding from the nose or gums, and mild bruising on the skin and uh, febrile convulsions. You know, uh, so these are the most common symptoms that can uh, a patient have. You know. Uh, now the doctors use uh, uh, blood tests to check uh, the viral antibodies uh, or the presence of infection. So if you experience dengue symptoms after traveling outside the, uh, or to the affected areas, you know, you should see a healthcare provider or your doctor uh, if you are infected, you know. Uh, there is no medication or treatment uh, specifically for the dengue infection. So if you believe you may be infected with dengue, you should uh, you over the counter pain relievers to reduce the pain, headaches or the fever and giant pain, you know. However, uh, one thing that you should be very careful is aspirin and ibuprofen can cause more bleeding and should not, should be avoided, you know. So you shouldn't use uh, aspirin at all, you know, uh, without, consulting, without consulting your uh, doctor. So your doctor should perform a medical examination and uh, you should rest and drink plenty of fluids. And if you feel um, worse after the first 24 hours of illness, uh, once your fever has gone down, so you should uh, be taken to the hospital as soon as possible to check for the complications. You know. uh, a small percentage of individuals who have dengue fever can develop a more serious form of uh, diseases known as dengue hemorrhagic fever. So this is the most important complication. Now the risk factors uh, of the developing uh, uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever include like having antibodies uh, to dengue virus from the previous infection, uh, being under the age of 12, uh, being female and uh, if you have the weak immune system, so you are uh, at high risk. Uh, this rare form of disease is uh, characterized by high grade fever uh, and the damage to the lymphatic system. Uh, damage to the blood vessels, uh, bleeding from the nose, bleeding from the gums, liver enlargement, and circulatory system failure. So these are the most common complications, uh, serious complications. In fact, you know, uh, the symptoms of uh, uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever can trigger uh, dengue shock syndrome. So uh, dengue shock syndrome is a severe and can lead to excessive, ble excessive bleeding and even uh, it can uh, lead to death. You know. 
uh, there is no vaccine to prevent uh, uh, dengue fever. Uh, the best method of protection is to avoid mosquito bites and to reduce the mosquito population. So when in a high risk area you should uh, avoid uh, heavily populated residential areas, uh, use mosquito repellents, use air conditioning instead of opening, win opening windows, you know. Ensure that windows and doors, uh, uh, door screens are secure and uh, any holes are repaired, you know. Use mosquito nets if sleeping uh, uh, area are not uh, screened, you know. Uh, and uh, reducing the mosquito population involves uh, getting rid of mosquito breeding areas. So uh, these areas include any places that uh, still water can collect such as uh, birth ba uh, bird baths, you know, pet dishes or uh, uh, empty pla uh, planters, you know, and um, uh, flower pots or cans and empty vessels, you know. And, uh, and these areas should be checked, uh, emptied, and uh, changed regularly. So these are the uh, uh, some tips, you know, so to just to avoid uh, uh, to prevent the uh, dengue fever. You know, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching this uh, channel. And uh, if you need more information, please visit our website www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Thank you very much. Goodbye.